Well, hi. Is it high now? Well, hi. How are y'all? I love you. Uh-oh. Don't show my eyes when I say that. Uh, but, uh... Oh, I'll show you how crazy the monitoring stuff are, uh, stuff is. I've been out here while we do the sky report. It's pretty nice skies right now today. Well, these last summer's days. Go out and, if you can, go out and <coughs> yeah, enjoy these last summer's days. That's the sun you can see over there. I'll tell you how weird the, uh, this is not what this is about. I'm just going to run through this real quick. We'll spend about a minute on this. Uh, see how weird the, uh, and the insect coming at me too. The uh, monitoring stuff is. I, I, I've been sitting out here for quite a few minutes and stuff. No reason to have air conditioner on either, really. And uh, you know, nothing, nothing going on. As soon as I started talking, bam! Right there, the the neighbor that's been having the monitoring uh, problems. It's a air conditioner unit turned on as soon as I started talking. Boom, right there. I mean, that's how. No, I don't want to talk, talk about stuff like that. Uh, I, don't, I don't really subscribe to the, oh, you can't talk about it at all because it'll give the inter enemy energy. I believe there's a way to talk about it that you can, and there's a way not to. But that's how, you know, wasn't nothing coming at all. I started talking. Boom. That's that's how crazy it is. Oh, here we go. There's more coming out back here. Wow! I started talking, and just as I just as I expected, I try to put my back to the least uh, uh, populated, rambunctious uh, direction, and here they go. Wow! It's just amazing. Wait a minute. Well, I guess I'll pause and wait for another. Can't explain that back phenomenon, but magnetic. I'm gonna get some insect stuff now. The insects. That's why I've always been a winter person, man. It's, what's distractions? Hopefully, so well. Anyway, so first subject is I've uh, researched the. Uh, the pros and cons of recording and screen recording in a uh, portrait and then landscape. Anyway, long story short, I'm doing this, doing this in portrait. Anybody, anybody, anybody have any complaints about portrait, any uh, critiques, any uh, advice? Because I'm probably going to overlay this on something landscape. Oh, gee, Wilker. Get the freak away from me. I can talk on the phone. The heck. That's the biggest bee wasp I ever seen. So big you didn't lose it when it flew away. Whew. I know there's nothing wrong for me with me talking. Yikes. Oh, that was spooky. Boy, I had to get I broke this out today. That's full too. Kind of smells like oranges. I don't care. When it comes to pesticide, I'm like Dale Gribble. I'm king of the hill. I'll ingest it. I'll go through a cloud of it, whatever. I don't care. You know, sitting down and have a, some kind of bee wasp thing the size of a bird come by and knock you upside the head then you swat it away and it comes out of nowhere and just does it again no ain't happening you know it ain't anything godly either I've, I've heard evil unclean spirits laugh when they do stuff like that I've heard it before I have a, I have a old uh, back when I was little I hated those everybody else was on the farm around and his insects and stuff I was like 
Then I'd go into a rage against them, stuff like that. I think I was smart. I knew better back then. No, when they're, when they're doing stuff like that, it's usually, it's not. Uh, if there's spirits involved, it's not good spirits, it's bad spirits. You wonder why he's called Lord of the Flies? Mm-hmm. Sprayed my whole over shirt down with it. They say it prevents them too. Well, I soaked it so. I don't care if it's poisonous. If it takes me out, I want out. I want out insect free, and that's good enough for me. I'm the kind of person that loves nature and stuff like that. Sometimes I don't try not to walk on ants and stuff like that, but when they don't love you, when it's doing evil against you, sometimes you got to do something in return. Let's see if I can turn the back again. And turn in the back again. All right. All right, so let's start, uh, let's start this video, okay? Okay, finally. That's a weird looking hat. I sprayed that too. So how are y'all doing? Nah. Got some things about you, uh, about the uh, child comet. I've already told Sister Jack. Oh, here we go. Yeah, he's talking and focusing on something that's not evil. So we got to go and do something about it. Okay, take 15. Uh, so I think I'm pretty protected by uh, harsh chemicals now. And uh, and uh, so about the child asteroid, you know, so I was wondering about, uh, I was also looking at those other ones because there's a place the uh, Stellarium app for mobile doesn't it doesn't work right for me. I got like Android 11 or something. They're trying to download Android 12, but I won't allow the I won't allow the upload. Uh, I cut off the upload update. Uh, so I went to this other website that. Uh, no, I forgot. It's in the whatever. I could, if you want to know what the website is, there's a, you know, you research Stellarium online and you'll have a few websites to do it. You go there. And so you can like see the, uh, you can, uh, you know, research them yourself, whatever they're doing and stuff. I come nobody else talk, talk about Patrick on hourly watch and all those people. They're not talking about, they said like, like where the child goes after that. Heard somebody says like it might have went into the ark or something like that or something like that. But the uh, what I'm seeing online, and and not that they necessarily know the future, not that it has to do this. You know those those are projections. You know, even in the past, probably some of them are not accurate. I'm not saying it's a totally inaccurate thing, but I'm saying it's. You know, you got scientists and software and stuff like that to deal with to, you know, for it, the accuracy of that stuff. So you can almost be sure that something's going to be inaccurate. Probably the most inaccurate thing is going to be in the past or the future, more so the future, most likely. But anyhow, projected the child asteroid, for instance what I've seen on the Stellarium online is the child, after it goes down from Virgo there, after it goes down from Virgo, uh, it goes through something called, I forgot the spelling and pronunciation. This is the serpent bearer Ophicius I'm sorry. I'm new to it. I'm new to it. 
really. You know what I'm talking about, Ophiuchus. Something like oh, <clears throat> something like Ophiuchus. I even forgot the spelling. I'm, I'm not really that used to Latin. I'm not really some Latin expert. Um, the only languages I've really studied besides Spanish when I was in high school. The only other languages I've studied are Oriental languages, so <clears throat> and India. I don't really like the European languages that much. Um, so anyhow, it went to uh, Ophiuchus, the serpent barrier, bear, 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 and then after that, and you can study on, uh, you can go to Robert Wadsworth. He's one uh, guy that's heavily studied on the Maseroth. You know, you go to him. Robert Henry Wadsworth, something like that. Robert Wadsworth. That's one of them that teaches on the Maseroth and stuff. Okay, you can go there to learn about Ophiuchus and the constellations and the Deccan signs and all that, what they really mean through Hebrew words and all that. But then it goes to uh, Scutum, S-C-U-T-U-M. Something called Scutum. It's a little constellation. It's a shield constellation. They say it represents like warfare, shield, shielding, protection. After it goes to the serpent bearer, and that's uh, on into next year, January. I think maybe to like February and things like that. It's on into next year that it goes from now to next year. It goes from serpent bearer through Scutum, the shield constellation. So uh, does that not mean anything? What, what do you think? What do you think about that? Does that not mean anything? <sighs> I'm just asking questions with you, and um, I'm just asking questions with you to have us really, you know, look at reality as best as we can and, and the signs and everything. Another question I had with the, uh, okay, like all these asteroids and comets and constellations and stuff. And all those asteroids, deep space objects, and, and not, and, well, asteroids and comets mostly that is around that uh, Virgo sign and all that. Okay, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, all the names and all that, and even even have Strong's Concordance numbers. Patrick on Hourly Watch does this. You can hear him. I think he's uh him and actually Aaron on God a minute, uh, he, he, he does a good job on this. And John of uh, Watchmen for a Great Day, they all do good jobs on these. <clears throat> but one thing I was wanting to know is like, well, could this, just a question, just a question here. Um, could all these be a, some kind of organization's, um, uh, I don't know. They, I don't know if it's called a psyop or something like that. Could it be fabricated by some kind of organization just trying to? Uh, uh, okay. How do you turn the brightness down? You know, just trying to pull the wool over somebody's eyes. Well, I tested it and. Uh, One thing, I wonder if somebody could actually see these asteroids uh, uh, with a telescope. Are they actually there or are they there just in Stellarium? Assuming that they are actually there, which is likely, you know. When did they get named? Like, uh, what was what was one of his... Uh, can't think of offhand. There were so many of them. It was near like the shoulder or something and... Uh, but a lot of them, really. It, it, you know, go to a name like this asteroid or this comet is also named this, and it has this number with it. I, I researched and knew how, the, how they get their names, okay? And could it be trying to see if it's fabricated, you know, by some other organization? It's called the International Astronomical... 
dang it. I think union is the word. I'm just reading through all of these things quickly, so, you know, memory and stuff. I think it's called International Astro Astronomical Union. Is uh, the main board, and a part of that is uh, the um, there, there's there's another part of that that names the uh, it's a part of that that names the uh, comets and asteroids. How they get their names? So a lot of those names, like the one named, here's the most interesting one to me. He, he saw one of them. Y'all correct me. Y'all tell me which one. He got the name 2023. It had a number 2023 on it, okay? So it's like, well, I know from my reading that part of that is um, one number that they give them when they, when they first discover them. They'll give them a number of when they were discovered, the year. So it'll be 2023. And then they'll give it a like a two-letter designation, like S3 or something. There's one comet, Panstars, S3, uh, 2021 S3, right? That's like the third week of September or something like that. That's why they was doing it, of 2023. That's, but then after that, that that wasn't that wasn't the number. After it gets an official, when it gets an official name, it's just numbered. It's just like like the first one was. Many years ago, uh, Ceres, the com, uh, the asteroid Ceres, has got number one, and so chronologically they just they named the next one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's chronological, and it was discovered in 1950. I mean, this one that had the number 2023, it wasn't the year 2023, which makes you think it could be recent, and they're just trying to fool us, right? But no, it got the designation. It got the chronological name 2023 back in the 50s. It was like 1952 or something like that. So it got the name. It got that number 2023 back in 1952, not in 2023. It, it wasn't the year number. It was its chronological identification number. Number. That's, that's the 2023 that it was. So I'm like, well, that's. That's more, uh, you couldn't fabricate that. The only way that you could, not the only one, mostly the, most likely the only way that that, that would be fabricated if, if the asteroid's not there. If, if Stellarium's just saying it's there. But if you was able to actually look, is there an asteroid there? You know, if just Stellarium saying it, but it's not there in reality. Which I don't think is likely. So, so I'm testing these things, okay? So, if someone can confirm that those asteroids and comets are actually where Stellarium is saying that they are, which I would have to, you'd have to think you would be right, because there's amateur astronomers, and I've heard of nobody saying, What's the deal with Stellarium? They're showing that, they, you know, I, I know of no, maybe I could search that out, but you think that that would come out that there's, you know, there's amateur, there's amateur astronomers looking at these comets, especially comets and asteroids. And if Stellarium was just a bunch of bunk, hocus pocus, it would probably come out, right? You would think it would come out. So you would think that uh, Stellarium's you know, at least their present position, they're probably pretty darn accurate. So, that being the case, that, that, that being the case, it looks pretty good. And from there, I research, well, how do they get their names? It's usually the discoverer, the, the one who discovered it, if he's still alive, you know, he gives an opportunity to, uh, propose a name and they I was reading on the uh, I think IAU is International 
Astronomical Union's uh, website of what the rules are. <clears throat> it depends on where the, uh, they got a few guidelines, a few guidelines. Not a, not a whole lot of guidelines. A few, it depends on uh, where the uh, object was discovered, what part of the, you know, sky there. And some of them, like if it's from around Neptune, uh, they, they're they named for uh, netherworld mythological uh, characters. You know, so they have some guidelines. But some, some don't have guidelines like that. Some are just like... No, they're just a couple guidelines. But, you know, if his name... If it's from the 50s and stuff like that, <clears throat> I, I don't see many um, opportunities for a foul play, you know. For, for instance, some were named before the 50s. Some uh, were named more recently. You know, they got a name and all that. So... My, my summary of the little investigation on uh, whether there could be, you know, <clears throat> some kind of deception or fabrication about those asteroids and comets, for instance. Uh, now, whether that was a Revelation 12 sign, that's a, that's a different subject, but I'm going to stay on subject. Whether they could be fabrications, for one, we know that, that God could use the enemy anyway. You know, God can use it even though if the enemy thinks that they're doing something, you know, the New World Order and there's corporations and things. International unions and all that. Uh, God could still use it. And are they smart enough to like, oh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to make sure they have a strong concordance number that makes it look like rapture to try to fool these Christians. Are they smart enough to line them up with strong concordance numbers? My, uh, my, my experience with the enemy, and I know I'm pretty good, the Luciferian, uh, <clears throat> the Luciferian New World Order and their organizations, to how we've seen those signs, no, they the, what, what, it, what it would take for them to do that, nah. I'm going to have to give a no on that. They're not smart enough to uh, fabricate that as that well. They could possibly if they were smart enough, but no humans at least. The, the humans at those organizations? Nope. <laughs> that I could say no. Now, th those humans at those organizations, they do things to make themselves look smart. That's a whole subject too. Like, oh, they have this movie where every 923 and they put this in. That's kind of just like tricks to make them look smart. But they'd have to be beyond all that, you know. That's, that's trickery. That's sleight of hand. That's little sneaky things, you know. That's not really being smart. That's just being sneaky. And some people confuse being like that was was smart <clears throat> to to orchestrate all those numbers and asteroids like that from names you know decades ago to form that sign. The humans don't have that. No, they don't. Is there a fallen angel that or fallen angels or whatever they you know they're in they're in communion in communication with uh, things that are not human. Okay, if that was possible, which God could still use that, like I said before, you know, like even if they think they're doing something evil, God could still use it for as a sign for us. That's possible too. But even so, why, why would they do that? And you give it in conjunction with every other sign, you know. Those are not signs all by themselves, you know. All the other signs that. That, that were given and the uh, groaning of the body of Christ, which is to me the number one sign. Um, so 
So, okay, just to test this, is there a, uh, so is that possible fallen angels could be uh, fabricating for some kind of reason? Well, uh, let's just isolate those uh, stellarium asteroid and comet signs uh, for now and say, well, is what it is, the possibilities and all the things that I've discussed, but over the years we've had a whole lot more signs than that, so you kind of take it the whole picture, right? You got to take the whole picture into account. Here. Uh, here's a little comment from Biblical Astronomy Seminary thing of Maseroth Maniac's channel. Yes, Libra the Scales was originally a picture of Yahweh's altar. Did you know that? According to the Hebrew Maseroth teachings that they have, uh, that's what Libra was, and that's right after Virgo that I think some of those uh, asteroids were going to. Uh, the child almost went to it, and if, if something goes there, you could, I just thought like, going to the altar, you know the scripture in Revelation about that, I don't know. Take that, take that as you will. Uh, but uh, to move on, to talk about the Revelation, uh, I don't know if there's a connection there or not right now, is what I'm saying. But, Let's talk about the Revelation, what people are calling the Revelation 12 sign. Well, I mean, the way Patrick is, uh, I'm early watch his teaching, is uh, the 12 star now is, makes a case where the 12 stars are the 12 Virginies. There's fixed, fixed stars that are right there at Virgo. There's 12 of them. They're at her head. I, I agree with him on that. That makes more there's much more of a case of that being the crown of Revelation 12 than uh, than Leo because it's bigger and it's not really like a crown and it's he gives so many reasons. I agree with him on that. And I bet that Revelation 12 sign in the heavens, its representation in the heavens and the sky is represented by what we've called Virgo because if you if you look at the Hebrew Maseroth teachings of the constellations, yeah, yeah. And, but to call it a revelation to us, the other thing is that to be clothed with the sun and uh, moon at their feet. Well, according to those criteria, it happens, I believe it happens once a year every year. It happens around September every year. That woman clothed with the sun, a moon at her feet, and a crown of 12 stars. That happens. I think your uh, case for for these signs, for that being a Revelation 12 sign, you have a case that it is saying, hey, this Revelation 12 sign represents the time of year of the Feast of Trumpets and uh, yeah, around, around that time, you know. So that's, that's the case. That's, that's what you take away from it, you know, to take away all the hype and just look at reality. That's what you would take away from it. It's a sign in the heavens that happens during the time of uh, Feast of Trumpets. And it, the moon's now already going toward, um, it's already moving on. So if, if that actually was the Feast of Trumpets, it's not a month later, but that's another, something I've been doing probably was. But it's at a certain time of year. Okay, Revelation 12 now. There's nothing more besides that child asteroid, besides something. There's nothing more of uh, these recent Septembers being a Revelation 12 sign than uh, you could look at it 20 years ago, and it would be the same quote-unquote Revelation 12 sign. But this, the asteroids and comets that are there, yeah, I, I agree. We, we just spoke about that. If that is, if they're confirmed that they're actually there, it's not just in Solarium, which is probably true. They probably are actually there. We just spoke about that. And a child in that womb section and stuff like, you know, and all the Strong's numbers connected with it and all, uh, everything connected with it. Yeah, it looks like, okay, it's like this year's time. This year's uh Virgo at se September uh, time. Yeah, yeah, I, I see the point there. With, with the added 
with the added items there, not not the way it is like every year when that happens, but with the added items there, yeah, to point to it, yeah, Nishimura, all that. Okay, yeah, with the added items, I could see that argument. Uh, dang it. Yeah, it's pausing. Screen's pausing. So, so I was saying, Virgo gets clothed with the sun every year. <clears throat> Moon at her feet, like once a month. I mean, and about one month, not even a whole month, but about one month out of uh, every year. And they got the two Virginia stars there. It's all the time. They're at all time. But the extra items are what uh, this year it makes it look uh, more like Revelation 12 sign. Okay. And here is a screenshot about Scutum. If if the child asteroid goes as is projected by those Stellarium apps, after it goes to the ser uh, Serpent Bearer, which is the guy that's holding back, he's he kind of be called a restrainer, to uh, you could uh, research Ophiuchus. Uh, then here's uh, then it goes to Scuttle, which is a shield constellation. And uh, one thing I find that interesting about that, also in Chinese, uh, Chinese associated these stars also with battle armor, incorporating them into larger asterism. I mean, yeah. yeah. So even the Chinese, which they have a very uh, reputable uh, astronomy over. A lot of years for a long time so that's good to know that they also seen scuttlemans better better armor if the child uh, if we're still here you know and that that asteroid actually keeps going the way it's projected into next year it'll, it'll be there so here's some screenshots of that off uh Stellarium Web Online Star Map. Since I don't have a PC and stuff. Uh, child Asteroid, you see it right there. First it goes in Mars. I'm, I notice Mars like goes alongside it. It's alongside it now. It was it, it was alongside it in Virgo. And it still it, it keeps going alongside it. Whatever that means. But just just reporting to you. Libra, well, Libra we just seen used to be the altar of God. <clears throat> used to be known as the altar of God of Hebrew Mazaroth. So it goes there, as you see, there. Then it goes. Into uh, Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer. And then you see Scudum down there. It's headed towards that. <clears throat> so, so here, <clears throat> here's what I'm gathering that these uh, signs of that uh, September around the early version of, if it wasn't September, Feast of Trumpets. It's not Rosh Hashanah, it's Feast of Trumpets. Was, uh, I gathered this from it. What it was. Look at the iris there. For instance, there's a lot of things that we already discussed of whether these things are uh, reputable or not. Um, but the iris, Patrick on Early Watch, for instance, he was saying about, I didn't check this one. I checked a whole lot of the other ones, but he had all the other ones right, so I, I took his word for this one. He said iris means, um, you know, to watch. 
pretty much to watch. I forgot all the words, but uh, to watch, uh, to be observant. And it's right there. When all that happened, is right there at the eyes, around the eyes of uh, the constellation art, which is, you know, it could be, uh, it could be used as a sign too. Does it run there? Is the, you know, the head eyes region? I, I think it's probably telling us. Okay, here's a sign. Now, from here on, be watchful, because I think it could be. Maybe, maybe it's saying it could be any day. I give you a sign at this point, at this point in time of these things, conjunction. There might be signs later too. You know, but. This sign was one of, one of the main things I think it was saying. Uh, I get from that iris right there. That the uh, eyes is uh, okay from here on out. You're you're in. You know, be observant times. Be watchful. I, I gave you the sign now. To me, it's saying maybe it could be any day from here on out. Because I never believed it was going to be like you know on this day or something. I believe it's going to be a day that's going to be surprising. But if that sign said anything, I think one of, one of the keys is kind of represented in that iris at the near the eyes. It's kind of like be watchful, you know. Now, now it's time to be watchful, you know. From from here on out, you know what I mean. Okay. Now here, just going through some recent slides here. Don't get excited. I'm not saying this, but somebody made a point, and I thought I'd check it out a little bit. That uh, they said the 2023, like September 19th sign, you know, that we've seen so many that was doing uh, videos on it. They said to them, I don't think I necessarily agree, but they said to them that it look more like conception rather than birth and they they propose that what if nine months from that point they were saying nine months from the point you could say it's June 19th 2024 and they so you know nine months if that's the cycle that would be a sign in the heavens is debatable too but if it would be nine months, but if so, that take you to uh, the nine months from that sign would uh, take you to June 19th, 2024. And I calculated one of the reasons, don't get excited, but I calculated that, you know, I think uh, Brother Chooch did a good work about 50 reasons for a Pentecost rapture. And, uh, or Pentecost season rapture. Just think it out loud with you. Just uh, study things with you to get you thinking and studying and stuff. For what it's worth here. So I studied that time frame. I calculated only by using the only by using the Holy Bible. I don't, not using Josephus and uh, the Talmud and all types of other stuff. Only using the Holy and. I believe you can. You could calculate the biblical calendar by only using the Holy Bible, nothing else. And Pentecost is three days before it. That's, uh, what is it? Yeah, I'll be right there. According to the Holy Bible, Pentecost 2024 is most likely. If the year began in, uh, I think it was around the beginning of April, the number one candidate definitely for me for Pentecost 2024 is 15th, 16th of June, right there, you see it. The, uh, well, that's, that's what I'd say Pentecost would be 2024. Three days before the nine months expire. So, for whatever that's worth, Pentecost rapture. Just, uh, just sharing that with you. Let's move on. Here's something else. This is a study just to uh, 
help you get the study juices flowing. Maybe inspire you to study and uh, get into some of this stuff. <clears throat> In the world. Uh, there's another one called ASAF there. That's the one I mentioned that has a designation title. Uh, that's called 2023 ASAF. It was discovered in 1952, though. But its chronological designation was 2023. Discovered in 1952. ASAF there. But you see right there, it's an asteroid. Also, they sometimes call them minor planets. It was in that sign. 2023 ASAF, say. Discovered in 1952. 2023 ASAF, you see. Okay. I'm going to show you a little something. And so Patrick mentioned that uh, Asaph, the name, means gatherer. And, of course, that makes us think of uh, we should be gathered together under him. You know, gatherer. Asaph in the Bible means gatherer, okay. So I just thought, what what would the next one cataloged, number two, 2024, also discovered in 1952, October 52, what would number 2024 be? Were they, were they, were they making that type of, you know, would that look like the same? No, it's called McLaughlin, and there's no, uh, I mean, no rapture things, uh, I went through the meaning of McLaugh McLaughlin here. What's well, 2024? It's like some kind of um, Irish or something that uh, means son of one that comes from the water or something like that. You know, I don't have the same kind of um, same. Don't have the same type of meaning. So I'll just uh, see what 2024 was. And 2025 too. It didn't have the. Didn't have any rapture connotations at all. So for what that's worth, there. So this is what I was trying to think of earlier. It's called the Minor Planet Center. It's kind of a part of the International Astronomical Union. It's called Minor Planet Center that names this asteroids they they call them minor planets and stuff it includes asteroids you might want to pause that and see these it's if you want to read that the uh, or you could go on that website i think it's international astronomical union website the watch required to name what we call asteroids there there's some, uh, yep, 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 yep. No, no, these are all just details of, uh, these are just details that you may or may, oh, that you may or may not be interested in. There's another page. Hello. Oh, Well, go on the website then, because it ain't anyone to record, so. There you go. There you go. Let's screenshot that. For whatever that's worth. Yep, yep, yep. Then you go on to there. Okay. So 
So, anyhow, let's let's move to where the sun is here. And uh, that was just a uh, that little astronomical site was just for what it's worth. It ultimately doesn't necessarily matter. That's because either God's using them for signs for us or He's not. And given everything, uh, all the other signs and the times and the things we know, yeah, I, mean, I, I believe it, it is being used for signs, most likely. But, uh, you know, like watch soberly. Watch soberly. Don't any, not any take you off track or anything about anything. And the number one thing you can ask God for, um, you know, I think the number one thing we ask God for discernment and, uh, we ask God for what we need to know, and he, He'll show us what we need to know individually and stuff. Yeah. So let's get into some scriptures now. How are you doing? Let's end this with some uh, scriptures that, uh, yeah. This is meant for a, uh, this whole thing is really meant to just, encourage or inspire studying these things yourself and uh but now so first let me almost a side subject here kind of first let me alert you to i did a video a while back a little while back the difference between old testament and new testament prophets I hope I gave this scripture then. If not, I'll give it again. But if anybody does say they heard from God and having a prophetic word and stuff, here's a, here's the difference between, you know, they're not an Elijah that, you know, has to be, you know, he, the people judge. Let This is a let the others judge uh, scripture. I talked about that in that video. But if there be no, about tongues, if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. Like tongues. Let the prophets, there is a prophet, there is New Testament prophets. I'll talk about how it looks different hey, in that video. Let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. Let the other judge. See, people in the body of Christ, we have the Holy Spirit, so if you're in the body of Christ, you have the Holy Spirit, so for one thing, you're able to tell, you know, it's not like Elijah back in the Old Testament, the Spirit came upon him and everybody, even the wicked kings, they knew, it was like, oh, this is, you know, who is this? No, they knew it was a prophet because they, you know, like I said in the video, it stuck, they stuck out like a sore thumb, so, <clears throat> you know, it's like, if you, if you, if you want to, if you're seeking God, if you want to agree with God, you know that you had to listen to him, right? When he's speaking of prophecy. But now it's different. Let the, let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sits by, see, anything be revealed to another that sits by. That's New Testament. This is New Testament prophecy, how it works. Let the first hold, hold his peace. See? Uh, Somebody, about, something might re, be revealed by somebody else. Let the, let them, let the first one hold their peace. For you may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all be comforted. You know, preferably that could happen. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as as in churches of the saints. So the thing I was getting at there, you know. You, you could test, you could judge, you could go to God, ask for the discernment, you know, yourself, don't just believe, but, oh, this guy looks like, oh, he's something else here, I'll just believe whatever he says. No, not if you're in body of Christ, you don't have to do that. You, 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 you test it by the Holy Spirit and go to God in prayer about it, okay. Okay, so, I had an audio Bible playing one morning Long story short, and uh, I was hearing this verse, and it stuck out to me. Let's uh, let's let's look at this, uh, Luke twenty-one. Look look at the uh, order. 
kind of a question and a, just a study reading with you. Look how it said, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then you know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Do you think that was 2,000 years ago? I think it confirms that it was. And let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. <coughs> fulfilled. But woe unto them are, were, that are with child, great distress upon the land, wrath upon, upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive, and shall be led away captive into all nations. I think it, does that not tell you right there that um, that's what happened 2,000 years ago when, when Jerusalem fell? That's when they was led away captive in all nations. You think that's going to happen again uh, during the Great Tribulation? You think that's talking about they shall fall by the sword and led away captive in all nations? Looks to me that was the 2,000 years ago Jerusalem fallen. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive in all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles and to the time that the Gentiles be fulfilled. This is a, like a large view. I think this whole thing is a large view of it, you know. Like sometimes the day of the... We know the when scripture talk about the day of the Lord. It can talk about something. Then the next verse... It could talk about something that's a uh, hundred years away. You know, it's a. He it uses it also for the millennial reign. You know, many Old Testament scriptures. It could do one scripture for the day of the Lord. It could be the beginning of it, and the you could see another scripture for the day of the Lord. At seven years into it, or into the millennial reign. So you got to kind of a macrocosmic big picture view of some some of these prophetic scriptures you know they you could have even a verse next to each other that's you know a long uh, way away in time so it goes on in this age and there shall be signs in the sun the moon and the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts filling them for fear for looking upon the things which are coming on the earth sounds like the times we're into the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That's probably ultimately uh, ultimately the sixth seal, wouldn't you say? And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Well, that sounds like the sixth seal too, doesn't it? Revelation chapter 6. They see him, they say rocks fall upon us. So verse 26 and 27 sounds like the sixth seal. Does it not? And when these things begin to kind of, I believe in context, it's saying when these begin to come to pass. Uh, that's all these, all that that I just read. We're in the age where they they have begun to come to pass. Then look up and lift up your head, for your redemption draws near. So anyhow, not not getting uh, there's many little studies we could do from that, and actually, actually some questions there. But the one that uh, got me is, uh, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory? So so honestly, I confess to you what I was doing here. I was just rechecking. I was just refreshing myself on these uh, his appearing. They shall see him. Uh, his appearing scriptures and, and the differences. I think most of us that would probably be on this channel, we believe, and I've taught, and the way I've kept seeing it is there's a Hebrews nine twenty eight appearing. There's those six scriptures I often give that they actually use the word appearing for us. Uh, the good one on that is uh, Hebrews 9:28, and to him that and to them that look for him, 
he shall appear, he said, unto them that look for him. This is one of the New Testament appearing scriptures, which we've always believed is a rapture. The difference between the second coming, it, it, doesn't this show a difference between one appearing for us and then this appearing? There's another appearing. Behold, he comes with clouds, comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And see, this is appearing where every eye shall see him. They which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, amen. Well, I believe that's the beginning of that is the sixth seal. Apparently when the sixth seal happens, according to the scriptures, uh, every eye shall see him. We're still, on, we're still on the sixth seal here. And it'll probably culminate and that same theme will culminate in the the end of Armageddon when he literally comes down. But this seeing him in the clouds, I believe everyone seeing him in the clouds like this, these scriptures. Uh, apparently that's sixth seal, you know. There's a time when that happens in the sixth seal. Uh, now that's pre trib, but I wanna study <clears throat> I wanna study things uh, fresh, you know. If we ha if we have something wrong, I want to know it. That, that's 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 what I was studying here. So uh, are we right to say that there's a different appearing for us? See see, this is a sixth seal. This is um, uh, what Matthew twenty four twenty nine and thirty, right? Stars of heaven will fall unto the earth, even as fig tree cuts her untimely figs when she has shaken a mighty wind. The heaven departed as a scroll and rolled together. Every mountain and island moved out of its place. Every mountain and island moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, all these people, hid themselves in the dens of the rocks, said, fall, Mountains fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne or from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Now, if you believe like many of us do that, We are taken out before the great day of his wrath for dispensation so he could focus on Israel. It's like it changes from the church to Israel. All that, well, here the great day of his wrath has come. So if you're a pre-trib believer, there would be, it looks like to me, it's called an appearing before that. This is Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without salvation. And you got Titus 2, 13, appearing. Uh, 1 John 3, 2, appearing. We shall be, when we see him, we shall be like he is, for we shall see him as he is. Colossians 3, 4, uh, appearing. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall, ye also, then shall you also appear with him. Hmm. In glory. You know what? I just saw something. Even if this was the same appearing, huh? Even if this was the same appearing as uh, Revelation one seven and Revelation six, we would be. Uh, let's uh, test that. Let's think about that. Is that possible? That uh, okay? They're seeing him on the clouds, Revelation 6, even those that pierced him and all that. We would be with him. They would also maybe be seeing us, I don't know, if visually, you know, with the clouds. Uh, we would be up there. They're looking up at him saying, rocks fall on us. But we shall appear with him. When he appears, we will be with him. Is that a, almost a simultaneous thing? Yeah, it's possible.
But either way, I'm just saying here, I'm just making a point here that even if, let's go, you know, let's just go even if. Even if it was, when that later appearing, that appearing that everybody shall see, it could either, our appearing could either be well before that. Uh, I know people teach the sixth seal, we're, we're in the heaven and you know, the 24 elders and the Revelation 4 and 5 were in heaven. And it, it could be that and or at least you could say when the sixth seal happens, we're up there with him. You know, when the sixth seal happens, we're up there with him. Then shall ye also appear with him. You're not looking. When that, when that happens... appear with him when this appearance happens we're not looking up and uh, seeing the sixth seal all around us, us us standing on earth you know for sure when this appearing happens that is those six scriptures also uh, 1 Peter 1 7 and 2 Timothy 4 8 and the scriptures that I gave. When that appearing happens, we appear with him. We appear with him. For, you, for we are dead and our, and our life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him. So, so there's those six... Uh, New Testament appearing verses, and in a couple places, they don't use the word appear, but it's called revealing. Uh, ah, ah, how you doing? Pretty good. Uh, okay, this is not the revealing. I think it's the next chapter. Even this one, when we, we which are alive remain, shall be caught up together with them, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Uh, this will be the same time, right? It's before the day of his wrath comes. The day of his wrath has come, and, and we're found with him. When that, when that starts, we're found with him to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We shall ever be with the Lord. So this is a uh, it's kind of deserves its own study, but I'll just leave it leave it with this uh, and this here. But let it, uh, for God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. This is talking about, and that's another study. That sleep, well. Uh, I can't get into that right now. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. See, when they when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Yeah. So, we could go on studying that. Maybe next time we will continue to get get into that, and maybe do a refresher on Second uh, Thessalonians too. But I'll I'll end it at that. I'll let you go. I'm trying to make this a live chat premiere or something. So I hope you had a good time and uh, hopefully it inspires you to uh, you know, study these things. I figure it's like get the juices flowing, get the study juices flowing. You know, it's kind of like what we do for each other with these type of deals. Uh, so thanks for listening and uh, have a good day. God bless all the brethren in Jesus' name. And come, Lord Jesus. Amen. The Spirit and the Bride say come. Surely I come quickly. I think it... It probably 
often means suddenly. It means like just boom, you know. Boom, bang. For those that look for him, you know. So come, Lord Jesus, amen. Mm -hmm.